Well, um, so I'm going to talk predominantly about products, um, plastic cups and all kinds of cool stuff. A um, little bit about OBIC. Um, we've heard that about OPEC before. Um, you know, we were created back in 2005 as a, a center of innovation uh, to bring together Ohio's agriculture industry with Ohio's polymer and specialty chemical industry. Ohio ranks number one in the nation in polymer employment. Uh, we're number one in adhesives, we're number one in paints and coatings, number one in rubber, and number one in cleaners and detergents. And so back in 2005, um, agriculture wasn't doing real well. Uh, I also happen to be a farmer. And uh, I can tell you that I was trying to sell corn for like maybe $1.50 a bushel and soybeans for, you know, hopefully $5 a bushel. And, and the markets have changed a lot since then, uh, thanks to a robust bioeconomy and a lot of biofuels and uh, international, strong international sales. But, um, um, uh, but the center was uh, to help the polymer industry innovate and identify new sources of sales for our agricultural community. Um, and so our center was created really to expedite bioproduct commercialization. Now when most people think about centers at a university, they tend to think about research. And our center is more about commercialization. And I'll get into a little bit more later on in terms of how we go about that. But you identifying research and scholars that can help solve problems but we tend to look at what can be done to expedite bioproduct commercialization. A lot of great stuff. I mean, at this conference, Jim, great stories of lots of really good stuff happening. If there's something that we can do to kind of help and make it happen a little faster, that's, our, that's where we look. Okay, so I've got four policy points that I'm going to talk about. And the first one is that bioproducts represent an important economic development opportunity especially for rural America. And part of the reason for that is that we've got lots of biomass. And, and there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's market opportunities. But, but not only do we have biomass, but we have all of these industrial collaborators. We have all these parts in a supply chain. And so uh, there are multiple benefits. You, we take a dollar and we turn it over and over again. And so it's an excellent opportunity for, to, for us to grow our economy. The other thing is, well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to jump into our kind of three big pillars in the bioeconomy, feedstocks, technologies, and markets. And I'm going to lean heavily on materials relative to my comments and uh, look forward to your conference coming up on feedstocks. And uh, uh, we spend a lot of time exploring and assessing various technologies. But for today and for these comments, I'm going to focus predominantly on markets. Okay, so markets, we have a very important program at the U.S. Department of Agriculture called the BioPreferred Program. Uh, Kate, would you please uh, put up your hand? Kate Lewis run, is involved with that program and uh, she helps get companies labeled. Look at the number of companies and the number of products that have taken advantage of this opportunity. It's a, it's a really big deal. And uh, so hopefully we can get uh, uh, these kinds of products to, to be pulled through the market. Now, relative to economic development, I also want to show you a little video here. Let's see if this will pull up real quick. Um, from Europe, the, the Bio-Based Industry Consortium and, and some of the things that are happening uh, in Europe. There's a little 100 second video that I think uh, does a nice what job. Here we go. Industries joint undertaking is about in 100 seconds. The BBI is a new public private partnership between the EU and the Bio Based Industries Consortium. Together, they will invest a total of 3.7 billion euros in research and innovation between 2014 and 2024. 975 million comes from the EU, and BIC members will invest 2.7 billion to bring bio based products and materials to market. Why are we doing this? Because we have unexploited potential in our backyard that can play to our strengths, revitalize our most valuable sectors, and enable them to compete in the global bioeconomy race. And because we can achieve true sustainable growth. The vision and concept is simple. Move away from a fossil-based society that is dependent on foreign imports and contribute to deploying the circular economy. 
This means efficiently using our renewable resources and maximizing the potential of waste, agriculture and forestry residues to make everyday products such as food, feed, chemicals, materials, fuels and energy through state-of-the-art biorefineries. How are we going to do this? By creating new and novel partnerships, eventually forming one coherent and competitive bio-based community and by focusing on five bio-based industrial value chains. What's in it for Europe? We can reap the benefits of a global bio-based market estimated at 200 billion euros in 2020. We will create tens of thousands of jobs, 80% of which will be in rural areas. We will reduce our dependence on imports with goods and products sourced locally and all made in Europe. And we will reduce our carbon footprint by at least 50% in comparison to fossil alternatives. And we're only getting started. Want to learn more or be part of it? Join us. Okay, thank you. Uh, so if you could, yep, great. Um, we don't want to let them have all the fun, do we? You know, so uh, there's, there's economic development potential and we want to capture it here in the United States as well. Okay, policy point number two. A consortium effort is needed to pull, to increase market pull. So we've got all these companies, we've got all these products, but the reality is you're not really seeing them in the stores. I mean, you might recognize a few brands. You might see Seventh Generation or, or uh, you know, Burt's Bees or, you know, a couple of small products, but you're not really seeing it mainstream. So what are we going to do about that? So. Um, I'm going to give you a little bit of update on some market research that OBIC has funded for the last two years. Uh, we've done a national survey of uh, consumers, uh, 600 respondents there, and um, uh, a little bit about what we've learned. The first thing is when you just ask them, are you aware of any bio-based products? They go, yeah, sure, I'm aware of those. I mean, I, I, I think I am. Uh, and then you ask them, well, what kind of categories of products are, are you aware of? Uh, or what products have you bought, you know, and, and immediately you find out that, well, you think you might know, but you really don't yet know. Um, and, and so I, I need to explain the color coding here uh, because it's too hard for you to read that. Uh, blue is our national data and the darker blue is from 2014. And then the lighter blue is from 2013. So you can see that we've got uh, two years worth of data. And you can see that uh, there's more awareness, uh, but again, it's not very deep in terms of, of knowledge. The red is uh, 200 respondents from Ohio, both uh, this past year and, and the previous year. Um, and so we asked them, um, have you purchased any bio-based products? And yeah, I'm sure I have. Uh, but when you ask them, well, what have you bought, uh, the, 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 you know, it falls apart. So the, the reality is that there is a sense that I'm pretty sure I've done this. I think this sounds like a pretty good idea. I should have done it, but, but when you really uh, probe deeper, you find uh, very little. Then we give them a definition of what a bioproduct is. And after we've given them the definition, we say, so what are the benefits of uh, bio-based products and the number one answer is better for the environment. So the, the number, well, the number two answer is I don't know, but, uh, but you get a sense here of the, the respondents indicated their top three uh, uh, responses and so nearly half of all of the respondents uh, claimed that it was better for the environment and then 47% claimed that they didn't know. Uh, bio-based products, do bio-based products make a difference? Um, just a simple yes, no question, but you know, the majority of people think that by buying bio-based products, they are making a difference. And so uh, we need to help them with that. And then uh, we ask them to rank like the top uh, uh, three uh, bio-based, uh, benefits of buying bio-based products, and again, environmental sustainability is the number one reason. Um, what kinds of products would you have interest in buying? Things that come in contact with your skin, personal care, uh, laundry products, uh, are, tend to be the top items. Things that are more expensive, like the idea of carpeting, bio-based carpeting, uh, less so, but, uh, but interested in those things. But, you know, um, again, a, a, a good majority of uh, 
consumers would like to buy household cleaners that are bio-based. Uh, and then we ask, after having given them this, the definition, having asked them about uh, their knowledge of bio-based products, that tiny little bit of engagement that we did with them through this survey, we ask them, would you be willing to pay more for uh, bio-based products? And again, you know, uh, well over two-thirds of the respondents said they'd be willing to pay at least 5% more, and you know, almost 40% would be willing to pay 10% more. Now, you know, I don't give that a lot of credence, you know, but I'm still, we, we still are looking at the fact that we, we had this very simple engagement with them in this study, and they're saying, you know, this makes sense to me. I would like to be involved in this, and this is how I could be involved. Uh, I'm not going to go through the, this uh, wordy slide. I put it in there. It's in the deck so that when you get the slides, you can understand some of my our observations. Okay, one of the things that we're doing at OBIC and, and in Ohio is we have what we call the OBIC Sustainable World Tour. We have this uh, beautiful van that was donated to us by a Ford dealer. Uh, we take it around to, to different uh, uh, events. Uh, in the lower right is a county or the Ohio State Fair. The above is at a Dayton Dragons baseball game. Uh, lower left, uh, hello Todd Campbell. Uh, it was uh, it was in Washington D.C. And, and when we were visiting, one time. So, um, but we take these products, and again, Kate's been very helpful in in helping us get ten of these USDA bio-based products that we can get in front of people and introduce them to the concept and 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 answer questions and excite them about the possibilities associated with bio-based. And then uh, uh, Jim's indicated our showcase. This was uh, Secretary Vilsack uh, speaking at our show. And really uh, trying to provide a, 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 an event that could allow people to see these products and, and really try to get some more enthusiasm and market pull for these kinds of products. Policy point number three. Uh, bio product commercialization is not something that you do alone. We talked about the economic development component, the supply chain. And that's something that OBIC has worked hard on, is what we would refer to as cluster development. And so realizing that there is a public, private collaboration opportunity here, and, and to think about what can, what can we do by bringing together public stakeholders, private interest groups, to drive commercialization and to lessen risk and improve probability of success. And so some of our prior experiences, again, I mentioned we got a grant from the state of Ohio, so we've been kind of doing this since 2005, um, bringing together these different collaborators, identifying a technology that has opportunities, connecting them with downstream users, upstream providers of feedstock, and really beginning to build together these uh, robust clusters. And then, um, um, and so, you know, ultimately here we have mature supply chains that uh, provide jobs, provide uh, economic value for the biomass producer, provide new markets for the polymer companies and the product developers, et cetera. Policy idea number four, uh, waste-based uh, represents a new approach for commercialization of bioproducts. If you remember earlier, I had a slide up there I called cell to cell, C-E-L-L -L to S-E-L-L, -L, and uh, being C-E-L, a biological term to a market. Well, here, now we're flipping that around and thinking post-consumer as a source of material or market incentives. Uh, thinking about anaerobic digestion as an enabling technology. Uh, really excited about, you know, there's, there are lots of products out there in the, uh, uh, the bio-based area. In fact, within the USDA BioPreferred program, there are 300 companies that are producing either food packaging or food service items. And they produce 1,709 different products. This happens to be Eco's Cup. And uh, uh, that's uh, biodegradable, in this case compostable, but in many cases also anaerobic digestion. What can we do to add value so that these kinds of materials can more fully realize the, their value proposition? Like this thing says on here that it is uh, compostable in commercial facilities only. 
uh, which may not exist in your area. So let's get those things in our area. Anaerobic digestion is an interesting opportunity. Uh, to close, uh, we, we often talk about the bio-based promise. Uh, we suggest that bio-based innovations offer consumers intelligent, sustainable choices because they use renewable materials derived from plants. Smart for tomorrow, even smarter for today. So thank you for uh, uh, your time and for the opportunity to be with you today.